my grimoire has been washed um, and soaked and washed in um, purple power as well as thrown in my sonic cleaner so that um, I can scrub all these parts and get it ready for first priming session. Now, once I'm ready, once I finish washing it, I let these sit overnight and uh, skewering these. These are basic, these are bamboo skewers with an alligator clip of some sort. And I have a s assortment of these for the various types of um, parts I could hold with this. Um, certain pieces, I will put just a skewer into into a holding spot that you know won't get painted like the inside of this gun. And this will hold my part so I can paint this. Certain other parts, such as um, this piece, I have leftover plastic sprue and it fits right in there. All I have to do is put a skewer to hold onto that and I have this part held and ready for painting. Now some of the other parts that are a little bit more difficult to <clears throat> hold onto, such as you know um, these veneer pieces that yeah I could grab a skewer and hold on to the edge of that but what I did here was I um, have duct tape. And I take I taped around a skewer like this, just once once around, and reverse the taping so that the sticky part is on the outside. <clears throat> what happens then is I could just use this as a sticky holder. Now once I paint this, um, there's paint all over this, and I've lost my stickiness. I just unwrap it. And I still continue to reuse this as I slowly unwrap this. Some of these holes are thicker. I don't have a spot for this. So I'll use uh, this and hold it like so. And this is ready for painting. So my parts are ready on skewers and whatnot, and I'm just gonna prime using Mr. Surfacer 1000 that I've already pre-thinned in these bottles. It's basically this stuff just thrown in here with some ball bearings so I could have it already pre-thinned. I don't have to waste time thinning it and use that straight in my airbrush. I'm gonna start off with my gun piece. I've not completely finished uh, sanding and fixing all the areas, but what I want to do is I want to spray some primer on this so I can get it one uniform color so that um, I can see where the areas I really need to focus on um, fixing. So I'm going to go ahead and just start spraying this. Spray a light mist over this first. Once I have my light mist, I can go ahead and spray a little heavier. I can also spray closer. I'm not really concerned about the barrel piece yet. I just really want to focus on uh, this area so I can see where I still need to putty and how I need to sand this. So now that this is one uniform color, it's easier for me to see, you know, I want to fill that still. Some of this area looks a little rough. I'm going to continue to work on that. I have some holes here, but it gives me a better feel for where I need to focus my attention on. Now this piece I've already primed and sanded down. Um, because there's some mistakes in the in the sanding so what I'm gonna do is another mist coat let that dry a little bit I can always take air and just spray air and kind of air dry this a little bit if, if I you know, spray a little too much paint and go back to building up my primer layer.
Now you notice that it's just getting just about a wet look to it. But um, once this dries, this will be a very flat finished surface, a dull, really dull surface. But the spray technique I, I, I use is to spray fairly heavily, which gives it that wet look. And it's between this and spraying a little too much is when you start getting paint to pull. So I have pretty decent coverage over this part I'm going to stop. And it looks like if I move it around in the light I can see if shadow's catching on anything. And this looks like it's a pretty good uh, sand job. So I've done primed um, these parts and I selected a couple of these pieces out there after I've um, primed it just to inspect it. And these are the pieces I've picked out that still need work. The rest of the pieces are pretty well primed and ready for painting. So there's a couple of parts that need some focus on. Um, starting with uh, this piece here. I added this spike piece here so when I glued it down I didn't get a complete seal so there's a little bit of a gap right there that I'm gonna have to fill using a light curing putty and just go through and work through some of these parts there's still a hole here that I need to fill with the putty there's some missed spots uh, that I need to sand and some holes that are still here so as well as over here are some some holes or some gaps so I'm going to be doing some filling for this sanding some of these areas a little smoother since it looks kind of rough right here and um, we get to work So I've taken my light curing putty and filled this area right here. I'm just going to turn on my light and cure this. So for this part, I filled in this area with the light carrying putty right here. So I could go ahead and sort of check it with my uh, skewer to see if I have run by feeling bumps. But other than that, the true test for this is just to reprime this, and if the fix is good, we can go on to painting. What I'm doing here is. I have a panel line for this uh, fuel tank and I want to add another panel line here. So I have some dynamo tape which is uh, some old uh, labeling style uh, labeling tape. It's got some thickness to it and it's got a sticky backing. And I could take a scribing tool like a tri tool or even one of these BMC scribers and basically draw in some panel lines. What I can also do is employ the Tamiya saw. And this I have a little bit more control as I scribe this line following the edge of the tape as my guide.
and continue, and continue to describe this. Now, once that's done, I could take the tape off. <clears throat> I have the basic outline of my panel line in there. So I could take this and just carefully deepen that panel line. I'm not putting too much pressure on this. I'm just turning the piece while holding the, the hobby knife or scribing tool steady as I oops now if I make a mistake I could go ahead and putty that in and sand this down I'm going to take a, my triangle file and kind of scribe in a wider line kind of do a, a V starting with this part I've got um, it base coated with some uh, color that I used starting with this part I have it base coated and I'm going to use finishers pure white to spray uh, shading over the wrist. So I'm going to start off with a light misting tone first just so I have something to attach to the paint to. And I'm going to go real close and just kind of shade, spray the middle sections. Now I can spray pretty close to this. I'm spraying at a fairly low pressure. And you see that the edges have this <coughs> shading to it. That's kind of a stark shading, but um, I'm going to go over and blend this later on. So again, similar to what I did earlier, I'm going to catch around the edges. And once I have this roughly shaded, I can go in, change my air pressure up, and spray at about this distance and do a blending spray. This will kind of blend all the edges together, give me a more subtle shading effect that I like. Shading is a personal preference. I prefer something a little bit more subtle.
and there's my shaded uh, headpiece. So I appreciated this uh, part using the white over the purple color from my Zegok kit. Now what I want to do now is I'm going to spray hot metal violet and a light coat over the entire thing just to tint this a slight purple color. So, and since I've already shaded, I get to spray over the entire kit. And I just want a light misting of it to catch everything. Just to slightly tint this guy purple. Now what you gotta be careful of here is to not spray too much in one area and have a uh, mismatched tones. Now if I compare this with the another piece that I sprayed earlier, you can see that this has got a nice light purple tint to it. And it's got the shading because of the previous shading job from the white over the darker tone. Now I'm going to spray this piece next in the same manner. Light misting tone over everything. Just to slightly turn it purple. Now when doing this, I also need to check with the previously sprayed part to make sure that the tones are about the same. So I have this, you can see that this is a little darker than this, so I'm going to spray a little bit more of the hot metal violet over this. This takes a little bit of patience and control to make sure that everything matches up properly. That looks close enough. 